Ano yung brand yan? Sanic Air po. Mm. Ever since nagsat ang boardroom, yan ang gamit kong tissue, ha? Yes, sir. Kasi mas mura siya and hindi siya harsh sa skin. Wow, kaya pala lakas ang energy ko. Tsaka sustainable pa. Tuloy mo na. <laughs> sir, okay na po yung makeup niyo. Thank you, Dan. I should really see for myself what goes into these tissues. The why, the how, the what behind this. And today, I'm blessed to find out. I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and in this episode of The Boardroom, we investigate what goes into this pack of tissues. What makes it sustainable, hygienic, and affordable for all. But before the boardroom, it's the bathroom. Now, can I borrow some of these? With a vision to provide Filipinos with high quality and affordable tissue products, Sanitary Care Products Asia Incorporated was founded in 1996 by its chairman Renato Shaw. To continue his legacy of providing more job opportunities for Filipinos, his son, President Ben Shaw, is steadfast in the company's mission to produce more and more paper products that make use of hygienic raw materials devoid of harmful chemicals. 20 years strong and close to 300 house brand SKUs, Sanitary Care is both an industry leader and an advocate for sustainable and innovative paper products. Hey, Anthony. Hi, Benzo. Hey, welcome to SCPA. And welcome to the boardroom. Oh, thank you. Well, actually, I came from the bathroom. You know? Sorry, <laughs> I'm a bit late, huh? Oh, as long as you're using Sanicare, huh? <laughs> well, I have no choice. There's a whole range there. Oh. Let me ask you this very important question. People have asked me to ask you. How do you not overuse tissue paper? Well... <laughs> That's the problem with every mom for a five-year-old, for example. Yeah, but less is more. You choose quality and you'll use less of it. Another question people want to clarify is the difference between virgin pulp. Can you clarify this for us? Versus recycled. Okay. Because the idea is recycled is always better than anything virgin or new. Because it's in the environment. Right. But Anthony, you're using this for yourself. Right. This toilet paper is, that is virgin pulp is for yourself, for your family, your kids, your wife, your husband. So there has to be a strong element of hygiene. Mm -hmm. And virgin pulp is very hygienic. It has long fibers, not short fibers like recycled. And we're able to use it without chemicals. We're able to use it in a very natural way. Okay, state of the nation, Sona. Huh? What is the state of nature? Because again, people are saying, someday, no more tissue paper. Okay, <laughs> magdusa kayo, wala nang tubig, wala nang puno. Yeah. What is the real score? You've been at this for quite some time. Yes, uh, we have these companies who are very concerned about the environment mm -hmm. and are also concerned about sustaining their business for a long time. That's why we have these tree farms. So, and we also use trees that are not virgin forest from the virgin forest. So, so look, virgin pulp does not mean virgin forest. No. It's tree farms, tree as you farms. mentioned. So these are three to five year old trees that we are sustainably grown and the paper industry has basically been sustainable since the 80s, 70s. So therefore, Hindi tayo mabusa ng toilet paper. I don't think so. At marami tayo pag-usapan ngayon. Oh, yes. But I don't think uh, we can discuss oh, all yeah. of this in front of Che. She has yeah. to answer a lot of these calls, you know? Oh, man. So, where do we discuss this? Let's go to the boardroom. I thought you'd never ask. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's do it. Thank you. Venture, did you even have the chance to consider getting into this business? Well, I actually, I, I asked for the chance. Oh, you did? Yes. Because I surveyed, the most interesting thing I could do at the moment was not to go into corporate. It was to join the business. So what did you say, Dad, can I take over? How, how, did, you ask for, <laughs> no. how did you ask for the chance? <laughs> no, Dad, I, want, I think I want to help out. And did he think about it? And let me pray about it, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He immediately offered me a minimum wage job. Uh, oh, at so least. Minimum no. wage. Matagal din ang inihintay yun. Eh. Uh, higher. <laughs> So you started as a trainee, right? Yes, uh, I started out very much like a student. So it's a continuation of my education, and I was fine with that. What was the main motivation? For your dad, I know the story was your mom needed something yeah. to wipe you know, herself with that was more hygienic. Yes. Tama, no? That was the start. Yeah. Of the said, I'm going to use this knowledge and paper to come up with something that I can offer yeah. people like my wife, you know, who needs something more hygienic. Yeah. So that was his moment of truth. For you, it was... I want to fight the competition, or I want the lifestyle of my dad. What was it? I think it was uh, working with my family. And also the, the competition they were up against, it was a great story. 
And of course, I had my own desires. But part of that is just to continue doing something interesting, something stimulating. And then here it is, my parents had something going. And it was very interesting. We had just gone through the Asian crisis and the business just survived it. And the fact that it survived, I think, was a message from God. That's interesting. So you just survived the crisis, you know, you're barely back on your feet, and then you see all this competition. Yeah. And that would scare the wits out of everyone before it inspired you. Yes. And what's your advice now for, for, for kids who want to take on the responsibility of a family business? Honor your parents. Ooh. Honor your parents. It's a difficult pill to swallow. Was that something that's been with you ever since you were a child? And your parents always say, oh, this is a humble, very honorable young man who always follows what we say. I think I've always been a good boy. Wow. Good boy, but I, you can ask them privately. Maybe they have a different answer. A financial crisis that almost led them to bankruptcy. A major fire that had them contemplating on quitting and a massive flood that destroyed their newly inaugurated plant. Oh, excuse me. Yes. What keeps this company going? Growing, not just surviving, but intent on thriving in the coming years? Well, we find out from Ven after the boardroom returns. Ice now. If there's one thing SCPA is proud of, it's its culture, its way of life or doing business. Let's have a taste of that culture by talking to one of the members of this team of the trade marketing group, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hello, Anthony. So what would you say describes, how would you describe the culture dito sa SCPA? Well, here in SCPA, it's a family-oriented company. Many of the workers here are now in the millennials. Like you, I would suppose. Yes, still Nandupa. part of the millennial, yes. So, it's a strike-based company. It's actually what Servin wants us to develop to our employees. So, he wants to focus on us on the strengths rather on the weaknesses of the employees. Okay. Yes. What is the best part, you know, of working in this company? I think everything. Everything wow, about the SCPA. Whole thing, huh? Yes. Because um, I'm, I've been working with SCPA for nine years already. Wow. And for Since me, that's already... Since you were, what, 15 years old, maybe? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an achievement for me, actually. But um, working with the company for nine years, it's something I'm very proud of. And I'm hoping that I will stay with the company for forever. Well, okay, he doesn't know this question, but the, what is one thing that we don't know that you'd like to tell us about your boss? It's Sir Ben. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, Sir Ben is makulit. Makulit? He's actually very makulit. In what way? When, we, when we're in a serious discussion, okay. and then suddenly, he will just give you this funny joke. <laughs> Yung kulit na... Pang millennial. Ah, Pang millennial, millennial kulit. Yes. It's like, oh my gosh, saan ang galing yun? <laughs> Sir, so kulit. Yes, yes. Wow, thank you thank very you much for this time. Great. Now, from the corridors, let's go back to the boardroom with our boss. One crisis before you came in, two after you were already in the company and your company still survived. What remained? What did you see was unchangeable in your business? Ah, oh, well, the fire. Uh... I remember that because it was in the first year of me being president. Within that first year, as the first year was about to end, I was preparing my, my year-end report. December 30, uh, we had the fire. And that was huge. And they burned for a long time. They burned for six months after. It was still smoking. I think what happened is the fire became very, in many ways, purifying. It, tell, it told you, because within that day, we were here and we saw it was bad, and it was really bad. Privately, we, would, we said, I think we have to close the business. Well, that was an easy way then to do your final report. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great year, except we burned down. So. But that didn't happen. So no, no. what turned it around? Well, the next morning, when we have had a few minutes of sleep, uh, we said, no, we can't. We can't close it. What, what was the... Because we knew we had to lay off people for that to happen. So it was for the people. Yes. And if not for that, really, honestly, we would have just, okay. Done. So we just continued. Working with what? Working. Cleaning up? Cleaning up, <laughs> yeah. How many did you have then? Uh, that thing at that time, we have almost, we were responsible for about 1,500 jobs at that time. Eventually, within two months, we were running again. And one of the beautiful things we did in the branches 
is that we set up machines there. So we had smaller machines in Davao, in Cebu, in CDO, in Dagupan. And they're the ones who supplied Manila. So we were able to invest early on in that area. Which, by the way, was what you started. Yes. How do you explain that? You've got seven branches, mm -hmm. 23 at least offices. Yeah. Isn't that higher cost, less control, bigger inefficiencies? Iba yung centralized. Can, yes. you, can you tell us the logic behind that? Well, we have 7,100 islands, depending on high tide, low tide, I think. <laughs> but basically, it was so expensive to ship. You're basically okay. shipping toilet paper, and that thing in the middle is a hole of air as right. you're shipping. And the shipping cost in the Philippines is insane. It's Manila to Cebu. The right, cost right. The is in, Manila to also, LA. Got it. Same. Apart from the cost, is the fact that you've got local communities now yeah. benefiting from this, right? Yeah. We knew we had to be participating in the community. And by then, we had teams already in place. Looking at other aspects of your, of your job as, as a head of this company, the fact is you are educating people as well. You're not just selling products. Yeah. Because you're changing mindsets. You know, there's this whole idea about recycled materials versus virgin pulp. So how do you incorporate that into your strategy? Yeah, the very first thing that we really developed was this virgin pulp toilet paper, which was crazy in the Philippines at that time. People forget that 20 years ago, there wasn't any virgin pulp paper in the shelves. Now it's almost everyone is, 90% probably. Because you have this product that is more hygienic, stronger, less waste, less byproducts, and good for people. It is highly recommended by dermatologists and ob for women, and yet no one was using it. It was not available in the Philippines. And my father saw that elsewhere, everywhere else. So he said, okay, let's start a business with just that, having something that is really beautiful, something really good, but also sustainable. So we had to educate people because it didn't look, when you look at virgin pop, it didn't look white. Mm -hmm. It looked off-white. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Philippine culture is you know, yeah, the whiter the better. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it looks like it looks like the toilet paper didn't look like bond paper. It was that white. So that's all chemicals, it's all whiteners that are carcinogenic and it's not really good. So we had to tell people one by one almost. And the, the good thing about it is that once they try it once, they're not gonna go back to recycle. It was Why is it that the mindset still of most is recycled is better than something new virgin pop? Because it not is not good for the environment. Virgin, bago pa lang yan. Recycled, at least it's the second time we're using it. We're more responsible. Yes. The problem is that a lot of the chemicals that are used in recycling is not good. Mm -hmm. You're, you have to de-ink it, and then you have to repulp it, and then you have to whiten it. So not that all recycled products are not good. The other problem of recycling is that it, the sh it becomes short fibers. Short fibers go into your body, and it infects. That's why people have, some people have UTI, some people would have all these infections, which are not good with short fibers. Virgin pop has long fibers. They haven't been processed. And it also uses up a very small portion of the market, as opposed to maybe furniture or other needs for wood. We already know that using recycled materials isn't always the most eco-friendly way especially when harmful substances are used to produce it. For SCPA, it takes a lot to use virgin pulp, which they believe is the right way, from sourcing it, producing it, and checking on it to make sure it's done sustainably. We find out more about the operations and advocacies of SCPA when the boardroom returns. If you're wondering why some of Sanicare's products are off-white, don't fret. They've not been pre-used. They just don't use whiteners, and in some cases, harmful whiteners. So, with Sanicare's products, you feel safe for your skin and for the food that you eat. As we continue our conversation with Ven, we find out more of the innovative strategies he runs his business and develops his products. You're a recognized leader in innovation. Some of those that stand out, the fact that you took out that 
hard cardboard in the middle. Yes, the cordless. So payo may kasalanan no. Oh yeah, the cordless. <laughs> you call it the cordless. Yeah. Why did you take it out? It's it's space saving. Okay. One you put thing. it in the bag. It's portable. Okay. Yeah. Also for us, when we ship it out, it, we don't have to pay for that air. Then the lamination. Yes. You yeah. have that that you. You have something we, in between. Yeah, we basically put a food grade adhesive in the middle, made it stronger. And we're the only one in the market with that, um, still. You say that then, kumakalas lang yun, yes. two ply. You have two ply, then you have now two one ply. It's not, you don't know what to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now it, it doesn't even go. So it's yeah, just but there. some people, that's what they deliberately do. They, they separate the two ply, so they have to. <laughs> okay, we, oh, have, we still have. <laughs> <laughs> we still have an item that doesn't have the lamination, so they can buy that. Oh, so. The whole range, yes. not just of toilet papers. Again, you're an innovator when it comes to the range of products that you serve, and you're going beyond paper. Yes. How can you manage multiple products, servicing multiple markets nationwide? It's a challenge, first of all. I think just thinking about it, it's, uh, it's a challenge. But we always take time to evaluate our, our category. Mm -hmm. We see where the customers are going, we see what they're buying, and we also know what they appreciate. So there are two things that stand out. One is that people want hygienic stuff. They really want the best for their family. And number two is that they're looking at the environment. But we want to add more lines to it. So we added recently, I think a few years back, as cotton. We now have also wipes, baby wipes, because mm -hmm. I have a daughter now. My sister has a son. But as an organization, as a culture, what would you say is the key to making sure it's a company of innovation? I think the question is, is always why. Why are we doing this item? As I said, we're always about the customer right now. You're looking at what's good for them. And that's ultimately what made the decision. I know you have this weekly Bible studies oh, yes. as a practice. Yes. How would you factor that in now, you know, in, in doing business and making sure that the spiritual life of your people are continually growing? Yeah, we're looking always at what made our life such an outlier for most people. Uh -huh. because Indeed it is. It, because for me, I feel like I didn't really do anything super special to deserve it. And I always look at what has been the best thing about my life? It's always been the Lord. So when I look at what happened in the fire, I think my testimony became much stronger then. I mean, the track record of the Lord is just there. Then I saw the changes in my people's lives as well. I think that's the most satisfying thing. And I said that if just one more person gets this kind of testimony, I think it's worth it. So you might take out that uh, middle thing from the toilet paper, uh -huh. that core, but this is a core that will remain. Oh, yeah. We, it has to. I think we might as well close the business if we forget it. And it's certainly what makes your employees also proud that they're part of such an organization. I hope so. <laughs> well, you mentioned that if there's anything you're going to get into, and you will get into new things, one of your most important criteria is that it has an impact. I think we always have to go back to the why, the why of SCPA. And when my father started this business, he didn't really need the money. He was, he was joking that, oh, mayama na siya. <laughs> but he was saying that he just wanted, he said he wanted to give back and be an employer. Maybe just for 10 to 12 people. If he was a specific number, 10 to 12 people, he'll be happy already. And now, of course, fast forward that now to about over 2,000 people. And it's me now who's carrying the torch. I think those people, those 2,000 families are too valuable. And ultimately, we always talk about Great love for what we do and the people we do it for. And of course, what we do is the quality, the hygienic, the service level, the investments in, in, uh, in the branches. That's the, how we do things. But ultimately, we want a company that makes an impact, not just for the products. It's for the people that we touch. And judging from the past and where you are now, it seems like for your company, the best is to come. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Venture, for this time. Thank you time. so much, Anthony. Yes, appreciate it. Forget to give credit to what brought you where you are and you're a tragedy waiting to happen. But if you continue to build on the solid foundation through the years, you have a lot of room to grow and make solid impact. Join me again next week as we engage some of the country's top business leaders, innovators, and executives. I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and this is The Boardroom.